Hello and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, go to the website svos.org. Our guest artist is Joanne Amiro, and she is an abstract painter who paints her canvases with a myriad of transparent layers to create the most luminous paintings. So welcome, Joanne. Thank you. I am honored to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So tell us a little bit about your background. Where are you from? I'm Canadian. I'm from Montreal. And I moved here in California about 14 years ago. So you've been here quite a while. Yes. Excellent. And how did you get your start in art? Where, where did that begin? Well, I started to paint here in California. I did not paint before. Um, I decided to stay home and raise my children. And I started to paint with them and paint with the children at school, also to create masterpieces with the children and raise money for their school. This is all how it all started. So you started painting with your children, and your children sort of are the inspiration for your art. Oh, they are. I have so much love for my children. I know every mother out there has a lot of love for their children, but I, my gift is not words. So I put colors on the canvas, and this is how I express myself. This is how I say to my children and to the world, how much I love them. Excellent. Well, you do a wonderful job in showing that with the bright colors that you choose. Thank you. Excellent. So from starting with painting with children, where did you go from there? How did you progress in your art? Well, yes, I didn't know really I could paint. And uh, so I, I started to paint with the children. And I got I fell in love with this and took a class here and there, another class. So I took several classes in different colleges in the Bay Area. And I took one class that really changed my life. Uh, and it was a color theory class. Oh, nice. Yes. That's interesting. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the color theory that you learned. Well, I learned that you cannot just use any color like this. Colors. They are friends, you know, only certain color work well with other colors. And so you get to study color and how they interact with each other. So every time since that class, I always talk to my color wheel when I paint. So you brought a color wheel. Why don't you show us the one that you use? Yes, uh, this one is different from any other color wheel we use in college because I also took um, workshops with different artists. Mm -hmm. And one workshop I took is with artist Robert Burridge. Mm -hmm. He lives in Southern California. And I fell in love with his work and went to take workshop, abstract workshop with him. And he designed his own color wheel. Uh -huh. So tell us a little bit about it. This color wheel is, you get to choose the main color. And he calls it the dominant color. So let's say, like in this painting, for example, I chose uh, purple. Yes. So I will turn this wheel to purple. And here I'm going to indicate this is the dominant color. And then Robert Bridge tell us, well, the focus point should be green. Ah, with the purple. Uh, yes. When, you, when your main color is purple, your focus point should be green. And then you have spice colors. So mm. around that around that focus point you have the spice colors and so you just follow the arrows in this case it will be like a yellow or gold and then a, a type of blue so it looks more turquoise blue with the yes. purple yes and so that's what you use with this painting here yes i see, see that it. very nice I, I i love this technique it's different but sometimes i will go beyond and i'll say wait a minute i want to use yellow too and I'll <laughs> grab the other classical color wheel and I say, yeah, this color wheel tells me I can use yellow. yellow. <laughs> so I do. But this is yes. how I, I, I approach my paintings. So you use a very definite color theory approach. Yes, oh, yes. Very well. And then 
What other types of classes have you taken? I have taken uh, painting, one, two, and I have taken 2D design also. And I just um, go into workshops with artists that I fall in love with their works. So I go to those um, one week or a long weekend workshop and Very just nice. paint full time. It's, it's great. That sounds wonderful. So you have two main styles of art that you create. And the first one, you use many different layers of transparent glazes. Yes. So tell us a little bit about how you do that. How do you mix those colors? Yes, I will put my color and then glaze medium. And it's really half enough. And so every color I put on the canvas uh, is transparent. And I want to see, I build on top of each other, on top of every layer, and I want to see through. Um, this is how I build the canvas, and it will take, you know, several days to complete, uh, sometimes a whole week, two weeks, or a month. Right. And I keep adding and adding, and the end result is fantastic, I think, mm -hmm. because it reacts with the light. So when right. there's a lot of light, it's a different experience than when there's low light. Um, the painting changes totally. Very nice. And so about how many layers would you say are on each painting? Um, there's a minimum of 10 layers, and then it could be, because I keep painting until I'm satisfied. Right. So there could be 100 layers, <laughs> you know. Excellent. Well, you brought some images to show us on the screen. So let's take a look at those now and see what other types okay. of paintings that you have. So this one is called Unrestricted Heart. I did a whole series, and this was created during a workshop with uh, artist Robert Burridge. And the workshop was in Mendocino. I got to nice. discover Mendocino over there. And um, it was to paint abstract. And it was to paint unrestricted. So my goal was to, before this workshop, I was always painting subject. Right. I was sketching and painting inside the lines. And my goal was to paint abstract and be totally unrestricted. So I used my hands in this one and put paint and use my hand to just paint this uh, composition. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, this one I brought a pair in my studio, and I just decided to go for it and paint a pair. <laughs> yeah, I can see the different colors that you used in the color theory. I did follow the color wheel of Robert Burridge. In Very this. nice. This is uh, done in another workshop where we had models, modeling. So it starts with a charcoal sketch. And then I develop my charcoal sketch into a painting. This one is a mixed media. And um, this one is a mixed media. So all the background really is a collage of art paper. Very nice. This one is my very last painting. I just finished this a week ago. And it's called The Golden Gate Bridge in the Rain. And I've always, always wanted to paint The Golden Gate Rid That's Bridge. Beautiful. And it's big. That's my biggest painting I've painted so far. It's 66.5 by 66.5 inches. Inches, wow. Um, Very nice. I can see the various colors showing through from behind. I really like that technique. Thank you. That was built exactly like this with hundreds of layers of glazes. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, thank you for bringing those. Those are wonderful. And the other type of painting that you create are negative space paintings. Yes. Where you have a background and then you paint over it. And you brought some demonstration to show us how you create those. So what this painting right here is an example of that. Yes. And let's take a look at your demonstration. OK, perfect. Let's, so let's can, do this. I can see the colors shining through. So you use a similar technique to the glaze paintings, but then there's another element of yes, um, negative space. So I get to start with uh, a background. And I got inspired. In fact, I got inspired by another artist, a friend of mine, 
who has this technique? Um, he creates a really wild background. He creates a really wild background, and then he will sketch a dog, he will sketch the moon or something and paint the negative space. So I started this technique with old paintings. I said, wait a minute, I don't like these paintings anymore and I'll try this. So we'll see later some of these paintings, what I did. For this demo, I created a background. I just went wild with the background, put glitter, put, um, I used the golden liquid paint and just went wild. So the step to do here, I have, I do have my gel and my white and um, I'm looking at this background and I'm going to say, what is interesting in this background? What do I want to keep? Because what I will outline will stay. So let's say I really like this thing here. I could say, okay, I'm going to keep this and um, this is going to be a flower. And I will paint the negative space of this. So the space around it. Yes, exactly. Let's see here. I like this, so I'm going to use that too. And then maybe my vase is going to be going off the edges. Well, we're supposed to use odd numbers. Is it, is it what we learned in art school? So <laughs> odd I'll have, numbers. <laughs> I'll have a third flower here to have an odd number. One, two, three flower, and I have my vase. So this is what we do first. This we is sketch the first this. step? Yes. So I brought another painting here, and the sketch is already done. So the next step, I use my glaze because I paint with glazes all the time. I don't want to hide all this really, but I will. I will hide it, but if you see my, my, um, my paint is mixed with glazes medium. So I will get to see it. So I go around. This is my vase. I'm going to keep my vase. And that's the technique you paint. So what you will, all this here will stay. But you can still see some of the color behind the white paint and glaze mixture. Yes, Very exactly. Nice. So this is how we proceed. I'll move to the next one. This one is all done. It's magic. <laughs> so this one is all painted. And we can see through. I use glazes, and so we can see through. So at this stage, what do we do? Well, we have the job to make this painting beautiful, to give it a personality, to have a voice. So what do I do? I do, I will do, let me see here. I will use my glazes, oops, and glaze. So how do I glaze? Well, I have this wonderful pink. And um, I often, my technique often require a rag. And then I just go like this. And then maybe I'll use some of the green. And I'll put green in here. And then, you know, I just keep working on it, just like any artist does. They keep working on their painting until they are satisfied, right? So the next one, I already put all the glazes. And, um, oh, here what I did, in fact, is that I used the, the liquid paint and I just outlined, um, I just outlined the, um, the flowers. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to do this on the, the, the previous one. But we can show it's easy. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I want to see here. that technique. So I just go and I go beyond. I don't I don't want to follow my line like this. I want to be more creative and I'll design another line around it. And this is my vase and this little flower. Just like this. So you work very quickly. Do you go back and spend time with a brush to smooth it out or is this how you would leave it? Uh, no, I will leave it like this. And so we already saw the next one. <laughs> so this is the next step. So once it's dry, this is what it looks like. So this is the finished outline. The finished outline, you're right. Um, so what I like is that we get to see what was the underpainting. Everything, this, and this is what I think is so magical. And then you cover the negative space. 
So what is the next step? What do I do here? Like to me, this is not a finished product. So I add collages. So this is one I would use like paper and I would glue it. Like here, this is glued paper. I have glued paper here. I just like to take the gel and I glue it wherever I want. And I splashed some painting. So this is what it ends up being. Then I have to varnish it, of course, to get it this glow. Very nice. And so this is the completed painting. This is a completed painting. Very nice. So you, you brought some images for the screen that are other paintings like this. So let's take a look at those now. OK, yeah. sure. This one is called Full Bloom. And um, in Full Bloom, and this one was created, this was really interesting. I painted over a painting that I had painted several years ago. And I just decided I was tired of this painting. And so I sketched a vase with flowers, kept the underpainting. So the vase, the flowers are all the underpainting, and I painted the negative space. Very nice. Thank you. This is a different technique. Uh, for Valentine's Day, I decided to do a collection or a series of heart. And we do have one in the studio also that is a part of this collection. This has a lot of texturing gels. I just like to express myself with <laughs> texturing gels and glitter and splashes. Yep, very <laughs> colorful. Thank you. This is an early painting. It's called Winter Tulip in, in the Rain and Snow, uh, I think I said also. So this one has tons of glazes. And how I finished it is that I threw some pigments on it. Dry pigment? Dry oh, And so okay. I, I work with a mask. I have to have a mask. And uh, because these are so fine, this is such a fine, this is such a fine powder that I need to have a mask, not so I don't breathe it. Yes, well, that's yeah. important. Safety first. Yes, yes, yes. I painted uh, this painting is called Colorful Teen. This is um, my daughter, <laughs> and I just wanted to challenge myself. I, I wanted to know if I could paint. A portrait and um, so this is my version of a portrait it looks like her skin has the transparent layers yes. that you use for other more abstract paintings yeah Very nice. that would be like my identity as an artist I guess to use always transparent layers transparent colors and this is how I build up this painting also every painting I do yes that's beautiful. We Thank have you. very beautiful, colorful work. Thank you. Are they also colorful? Yes. I think, yes, because I think there's, we have enough drama in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way I'm going to paint drama or a dark painting. When I go to my studio, I want, I want to be happy, and I paint my love for my children. Uh, for my family and my love for life. I'm so right. excited about everything. So, this, yeah, those well, are my words. It you definitely know? shows through in the colors that you choose and the large, vibrant spaces that you fill. So, very nice work. Thank you. So, this past month, you were part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios. So, tell us a little bit about your experiences and what the benefits are for being an artist. The experience was fantastic. Uh, it was my very first open studio. Oh, nice. It was fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. So I got to be really nervous and uh, <laughs> really nervous and excited. And uh, I applied at the very beginning. Uh, and my one of my paint, this one, in fact, mm -hmm. got chosen to be on the cover. Of very this. nice. I, I was really Excellent. honored. In fact, this is great. And uh, there are so many people coming to the studio, and their reaction, uh, it's so wonderful to hear everybody, mm -hmm. everybody's reaction, to see their reaction, to hear their comments. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think the Open Studios really is all about, is interacting with the public, plus helping 
the artists market their work and getting on the cover especially your first year. That's I, I was great. I know. Yeah. This is exciting to be invited here too. I mean, this yeah. is part of the Silicon Valley Open Studios. It is, yes. Artists from the artist directory so get chosen to be part of the show. So, so yes. my experience is extraordinary. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So what do you see for your future? What do you think will be happening for yes, you? That's a good question. Always. Uh, <laughs> I have two, two uh, daughters. One is 17, <laughs> the other one is 18. The 18 year old is going to college. Oh, congratulations. Yes, yes, Yay. right? <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, I still one year to go. Um, my goal is really to become a full-time artist and totally try to make it as an artist yes. and tell the whole world um, my my stories you know right. and so I want to be I want to do I'm, I'm really really interested in participating into residency program for artists and I have right. discovered that there are many in the Bay Area so I think I want to be working toward that you know working at some of them require invitation. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't, but you need to apply and present a portfolio. So this right. is what I'll be working on. Do you have any particular residency programs in mind that you would like to be part of? Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> there is one, uh, Montalvo mm -hmm. uh, resi Artist Residency Program. It's right here in, it's in Saratoga, Saratoga, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, but it's invitation. So, but I'll try to uh, get the word out there. And the other one is, uh, the, oh, this one is difficult to pronounce. Gerasi. Oh, the Gerasi Art uh, yes. Foundation. Yes. yes. So I'd like to apply for that one too. So what do you hope to gain from the residency programs? What do you think you would learn from them or grow? Yes. Um, it's the um, the participation in the community. Um, the, the the mission of these programs is to dedicate your soul, your your life, full time to creating work, right. and to collaborate also with the other artists that are being invited. So I'm. It's to take m my art, you know, as far as I can. So that's why I'm interested. And working with a community of artists. Yes. Excellent. So going back to your beginnings, you started with children. You've grown into a wonderful abstract painter, but you've maintain, maintained some of the childlike qualities in the, in the way you choose your colors and the brightness and happiness. You also have, you know, wonderful like, figures that you use. So tell us a little bit about how you started and what you were working on. Yes, in fact, the children taught me <laughs> because they are so unrestricted. Right. They will use any colors anyway. And I just go, wow, I'd like to paint like you. So um, I taught the children how to paint, how to handle the paint, what to do with the paint. But they taught me how to be loose mm -hmm. and how to be creative. So it was really a collaboration between right. the two, really. Excellent. So for the future, you've started your painting that has the Golden Gate Bridge on it yes. is much larger than the paintings that you've done before. You work in large scale, yes. but that one had a lot of detail in it, many layers. Tell us a little bit about what kinds of paintings you might pursue in the future. Do you have any goals? Uh, yeah, I would love to be able to do an abstract that is totally abstract, <laughs> uh, no object in it, or um, and I'm still unable to do this. I have to keep working at this. I have this, um, I love the work of artist Heinz. He lives mm. in Sosalito and he paints um, pure abstract. Yes. He, he, he paints both. Right. Um, and so I took a workshop with him too. And my goal was to be able to paint total abstract. So I'm trying to 
work my way there. I think it's so difficult to paint abstract that works in our amazing pieces. So when you say totally abstract, do you mean that there are no lines that connect anything? That it's mostly mm. just masses of color? Or would you combine you know, lines and question. form? What do you have in your like mind your when work, you say? Like your work, for example. Um, I don't want to be painting a flower vase. Right. So I would like just to paint like Rothko, colors, colors, like the red, a painting that is red, but it has so many layers of different reds and pinks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so people have, have a, a story and experience with the painting. In fact, Rothko is one great painter I admire. Yes. Yes. So experiencing color and really delving into the theories of color, but also how people experience color. Yes. Very nice. Well, you're well on your way to being able to Thank do you. that. Are, do you imagine really large paintings? Or yes. Do you think yes. Smaller? I can express myself so much on large scales. Um, I try to paint small, and to me, <laughs> it doesn't work. I need more space. Right. Think, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that suits your personality. Bigger, brighter, lots of colors. And so when you're painting, do you move very quickly to paint? Yes. I, I paint fast. And I, I paint fast, but that doesn't mean the painting is finished fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't we all take, know that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's been fascinating listening to your development of your art and how you've progressed in your paintings. And thank you very much for being here with us on Talk Art. Thank you. It yeah. was an honor to be here. You're welcome. And thank you for watching Talk Art. We've enjoyed your presence. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, very nice. <laughs>